Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm very happy to be here. Um, I'm here to talk about how we are using the mobile phone technology and the internet to, um, to change how government, um, civil society organizations are working together in Ghana. Um, the picture you see here is, uh, these are the guys I work with on the project on a daily basis from Accra, Ghana. Um, I started a company called Africa New Media um, as a startup to redefine Africa's image among the West. I've been preaching Africa rising, um, Africa is the future, Africa, Africa is now for the past couple of years now because I believe in the fact that this is the time for Africa to shine. This is a favorite quote I use every time. Let's say, until the lion um, has his own storyteller, the hunter will always be the best part of the story. I mean, let's face it, if Africans don't write their own story, who's going to write it for them? Mostly by the Western journalists who come to Africa, uh, sleep in five-star hotels and write about whatever they see on the street instead of getting in touch with local people and getting to know the story on the ground. So this story is actually going out to the Western journalists out there who seem to write better about Africa without consulting the Africans on the ground. Here is the fact. The world's impression of Africa is hopelessly outdated. This is what the world says about Africa. They see Africa to be poor, Africa to be full of diseases. We are always dependent on aid, guns, poverty, drought, corruption here and there. I'm here to change that perception today, that the Africa on the other side is what I believe in. I believe in the Africa of creativity, Africa of innovation, Africa of hope, Africa of trade, Africa with no corruption. That is the Africa my generation believes in. Dictators are, are allergic to reform and they are cunning survivors. They will do whatever it takes to preserve their power and wealth, no matter how much blood ends up on their hands. They are master deceivers and talented manipulators who cannot be trusted to change. I was looking forward to, to seeing Dr. George Aite here, but unfortunately, he couldn't make it. I've been a, I've been a great follower of his, of his thoughts, his ideas about African leaders and detectors. I was hoping that I'll get to see him. How can we change the negative perception about Africa? So the map here is from 2013. That shows the foreign direct investment in Africa, which is, which is basically coming from the US and the EU. There's massive growth over there. Um, we are not seeing anything below, uh, below numbers over here. A friend of mine decided to mash up data collected from the World Bank to produce this nice infographic of the Africa GDP growth. And you can see for yourself, we have South Africa growing by 2.8. This is from 2013. Ethiopia growing by 12.4%. Kenya by 4.5%. Ghana by 6.6%. Mali by 4.5%. 4, 4 There's massive growth. So why talk about Africa negatively all the time? There's a mobile boom in Africa where mobile is everything. We are actually seeing a lot of mobile phones than light bulbs in some African countries. That should tell you how the next generation of, of, of innovation and everything is going to be mobile-based. So whatever ideas you have to sell, it should be on mobile. The mobile phone has evolved from a communication tool to a device on which much of Africa's economic aspirations rest. In some regions, more Africans have a mobile phone than have access to electricity. This slide is just to show where we are going as a nation in terms of mobile subscription. By um, 2015, we'll see a 1 billion subscription rate coming from Africa. The symbols you see here are basically the various um, innovation hubs across Africa that I have worked with young people from. So that is, I have, um, I live in Liberia. There's the Meltwater Entrepreneur School in Ghana. There's the Hub Accra in Accra. There's iHub in Nairobi. There's I, um, Hive Collab in Uganda. There's Bongo Hive. There's Co-Creation Hive in Nigeria. Bongo Hive is from Zae and iSpace in Ghana. One thing common with these hubs is they are producing ideas. They are developing solutions to like local problems. They are using technology to design solutions to fight common issues that I mean we are facing, from um, health health app to delivery apps to um, monitoring security apps. Young people are basically working in these hubs all over the continent, 
and developing ideas to solve local problems. Some of the ideas we have is Seiya Chat from Ghana, which is more like a mobile app development that uses feature phones. So if you have a phone and you cannot use WhatsApp, you can download Seiya Chat and you are able to communicate using feature phones. So this is basically communication tool for people from the rural areas who don't have smartphones. We have Yugora, a team of young energetic guys who are basically developing an e-commerce platform to sell African products to the West. We have Suba. Suba is the next generation of app fighting, trying to fight um, Instagram. They, they make it possible for you to um, collect pictures from events even without um, when you contribute to it. So you, you basically have to contribute before you can have access to it. So sometimes you could go to a wedding party and people take pictures and you don't get to see those pictures again. But this app is going to make it possible for you to be able to see it when people contributed by location, by hashtag and stuff. We have our wallet, mobile paying platform. Um, one of the most important ones so far is the Tech Need Girls, where young, young girls from the community have been taught how to develop, how to code more in, in, in Accra. This is something very inspiring, and I believe we should probably uh, encourage this in our communities and more. I'm part of a group of bloggers in Accra using blogging as a tool to change the way government communicate the way civil society organizations react to issues about politics, about propaganda, corruption, and more. It started as a group of eight people, grew up to, to 200, and we are about 200, 350 bloggers that write about Ghana, write about Africa, and we are scattered all over the globe. Um, so these are part of the, the project we've, we've undertaken. We, we, we did Ghana Decide, which is an election monitoring platform where we use social media to monitor Ghana's election in 2014, which I played a, a significant role as a, as a team member. Uh, we've held blog camps, introducing young people to, to blogging, because blogging is a tool for free speech, which we are preaching among young people. Uh, we actually plan Block Camp 15 next year, which we're actually working on right now. So this is a picture from one of our blog camps. We actually awarded the best blogger, who, who, who happened to be a female, blogger, um, and others. We had a country manager of Google actually attend to, to um, inspire the young, young people. So I'm going to talk about Ghana Decide. Ghana Decide started as a, a project we've been talking about um, just at our, our normal blogger meeting. So we felt why not we use our expertise as technology people to basically take it to the next step for Ghana. So we, we got together, we got some funds from USAID um, the EU government to put ourselves together and uh, we organize um, a platform. So basically, this is the platform we use. This are the candidates in 2012 election. The, the program was non-partisan in the sense that we never discussed any political issues in there. We basically focused on getting information from the various political parties to the masses. We use Facebook, Twitter, blogs, videos. We actually designed a map to be used for that. We ran campaigns getting the young people involved. It got to a point in time where the young people who are 10, 18 and ready, um, were ready to vote were actually saying because of uh, uh, too much corruption, they were not going to, to register to vote. We had to change their mindset by running campaigns, reaching out to them in the universities in their communities to get them um, re um, re registered and get ready to vote. The turnout actually changed from I'm not going to vote to I'm going to vote, and we saw a massive um, increase in voter registration among young people from 40% to like almost 98, 98% because of we use social media to change their mindset and everything. These are a couple of pictures from, uh, from, from our, our, our discussions with them. We ran a project called, uh, called um, Your Vote is Your Campaign where we asked young people to actually write what they, what they want the outcome of the elections to be. So we, we, we did this, we gave them like a placard where they wrote their thoughts on it and uh, we basically shared with the, with the online world. We had um, some musicians actually join the, join the whole campaign where they used their influences to, to attract more people to, to change their perception about voting in Ghana from not voting to I'm going to vote because we felt if people don't vote, um, it means the corrupt leaders will be elected by, the, by, by whoever gets to vote. So we have to change that whole mindset. We had a map that was um, documenting every activity that happened 
throughout, throughout the election process. So on, the red dot on the map shows where activities actually happen. And the activities listed are voter um, vo voting issues, biometric registration issues, deaf, um, police actions, and here and there. So basically, we documented everything so that it was possible for even international media to pick on stories from our platform. We actually took a copy of what happened in Kenya in 2007 and replicated it in Ghana. So this is, um, this is Ushahidi 2007 post-election violence event, and ours was um, 2012. Fast forward today, um, we elected a, a very humble president who we thought was going to I mean, lead us to the next step, but things change. Um, there's massive corruption in the system. Um, People who embezzle funds are not being prosecuted. They're basically just being moved to different positions here and there. Um, I believe you're all aware that $3 million were flown on the, on, the, on the plane to Brazil to play Ghanaian players during the World Cup, which was something very, very bizarre. On July 1st, a group of young Ghanaians organized a protest called Occupy Flagstaff House. Flagstaff House is the presidential seat of the government, and uh, we decided to go protest against irresponsible governance in Ghana. So basically, we, we, we got together in our numbers and uh, we did what we were supposed to do, trying to, to, to get a voice out there. This is one quote I really like so much. When the poor run out of food, they will eat the politicians. This is sending a, a good message to them out there that no matter what they are doing, we are watching. And today we have technology in our hands and we use it to fight them. Um, we had people sit down in the streets, no, no, no moving. It was more like a protest. I saw, and um, we got things right. Another, put, another placard that says, tired of selfish leaders. I, I mean, we have a lot of selfish leaders on the, on the African continent. And it's about time young people actually sit up and fight them. And the only way we can fight them is to use social media. This is a very good um, artwork done by a friend of mine called Occupy responsibly. This is to show that I participated in this particular protest on 1st July, and it's, it's actually for the, the betterment of Ghana and Africa. We got a movement also drawn by um, a good friend of mine called Red Friday. So every Friday, young people who feel the government is not really working for, for them wear red, red dresses to work, and they show their displeasure at the government and more. So this actually speaks about what is happening in Ghana right now. We have a president who is comfortably driving in a, in a canoe. He claims he's working for you. Meanwhile, fuel prices is up. Propaganda is increasing, increasing the utility tariff. Taxes is like crazy. And education is not anywhere. Education is like declining. Um, you can see Papa, it is heavy. And he goes like, please keep your head up. Child, keep your head up. That should tell you how we are suffering. We have a lot of issues in Africa, I mean, in Ghana today but our leader is not looking into any of them. And that is really the, the, the sad story. I'm ending by saying that I support the fight against corruption in Africa. Thank you. <laughs>